program and 10 homes that we have already done. Um, we will also be uh, telling you a little bit about the expert panel and how that is going to proceed. We'll give you an integrated summary to tr kind of try and tie all this together, and then we will also discuss next steps. We'll take a break for lunch. When we come back after lunch, we will have microphones on the floor, and we will welcome you all to come uh, ask us questions, and we will do the best that we can to answer those questions for you. Um, the WV TAP team, uh, we, when we were asked to do this, uh, this was a very broad uh, range of expertise required to get this work done. Uh, my job as the uh, project and program manager was to find the right people, uh, give them the authority and the resources necessary to get their work done, and then coordinate the, um, the, the integration of that information into a story and uh, a summary for the people of West Virginia. So the team, uh, it, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm the program manager. I'm a statistician and scientist. I've been at this for a very long time. I have master's degrees in both statistics and in oceanography. Um, and I've been doing drinking water work for a long time. Uh, Dr. Andrew Welton, Andy, uh, give them a wave so they see who you are. Oh, oh yeah, Dr. that's it, Dr. Welton is an environmental engineer professor from the University of South Alabama. Many of you know Andy, he has been here as an advocate for the citizens of West Virginia since, pretty much since the beginning from the spill. Uh, Andy is the reason that we are all here together. He took the lead on the 10 home study. Dr. Michael McGuire uh, over yonder um, is the uh, AP Black Award winner. Uh, I'm pleased to tell you the AP Black Award is a very distinguished award in the drinking water industry. We have three AP Black Award winners on our team. Dr. Clancy, the first woman to receive it this year. We'll be introducing her in a moment as well. Um, Dr. Dr. McGuire has written a great book. If anybody is interested, uh, you should take a look at that. Dr. Andy Eaton. Um, uh, Dr. Eaton is the uh, is a is a chemist and technical director and vice president at Eurofins. Uh, uh, and then Charles Nesmond, uh, who is sitting next to him, is uh, is a um, chemist. And uh, Chuck is the one who did a lot of the uh, actual hands-on uh, detective work that we're going to be uh, speaking about. Uh, to my left, uh, Dr. Jennifer Clancy uh, is a microbiologist um, par excellence. Uh, and uh, Dr. Clancy, many of you uh, saw her. She was uh, instrumental in actually getting the samples taken in the 10 home study. She and her husband moved here for uh, two weeks, was it, Jen? Um, close to two weeks to, um, to visit people's homes and to work very hard to collect those samples. And uh, I, Hunter Buell, uh, down the end of the table, is a gentleman who has uh, handled the majority of the data that you will be seeing uh, and, and put that into a format that can then be distributed to, uh, to everyone. Um, other acknowledgments, um, our team, uh, I'm not going to read off all of these names, but let me tell you that the work that you're going to see today uh, is backed up by an army of people. Uh, those people are from the different organizations that we have talked about. These people have all been mobilized uh, uh, pretty much on a very, very short notice to uh, work on this project for the people of West Virginia. Uh, we also, uh, we, we've had uh, teams uh, at UCLA, uh, at Eurofins Laboratory. I, I need to make special uh, recognition about the ALS Laboratory, which is a local laboratory. Our 10 home sampling project could not have been done without ALS. Uh, ALS was instrumental in the logistics. It's not a small task to gather the data that we have gathered and we could not have done it without ALS. ALS also did analysis on the sample, so uh, we, we want to thank ALS in a very special uh, way. Um, the residents of the 10 homes will allow us in to sample in their homes, big deal. We really appreciate that. Uh, West Virginia citizens and volunteers, we've had amazing support. The team has grown enormously fond of the people of West Virginia. Um, we, we, uh, we commiserate with the challenges that you have all faced and the grace that you have done it under. And the response that you've had to our efforts has been quite remarkable and you've uh, really helped us get this job done uh, to this point. We're not done yet, we still have a ways to go and I'll speak with you in a few minutes. Um, the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Resources, amazing resources supporting us uh, to get the work done that we, we have uh, achieved to date. Uh, Governor Tomlin's office, again, many people, I couldn't even list them, it would take many, many slides. Uh, the West Virginia National Guard, everyone on this stage is a big fan of the West Virginia National Guard. Um, you have an amazing organization, yes, really. 
Um, they have been wonderful. They have been responsive. They have done difficult work for us on next to no notice. Uh, they have been responsive to everything that we have need, needed. And um, on top of that, the general lawyer and his entire crew bring amazing wisdom with them as well for um, for the job that they do. They, they, they've give, given us great insights and also great advice and recommendations along the way. Um, Dr. Welton has also brought an army of students here for earlier sampling that was done. Uh, and if I missed anybody, uh, please forgive me. It's a very, again, a very, very long list of the people who have helped us make this project happen. So what is our mission? Uh, we, we were asked to come in and to provide independent scientific assessment of the situation. Um, we wanted to look into uh, what, what, what happened regarding the spill. Uh, what was the fate, how the, uh, the chemicals were transported, and what potential breakdown compounds there might be throughout the nine counties uh, of West Virginia, that West Virginia American Water serves. Um, today we're going to talk about four major areas, and I have a really good slide of this at the end. Um, we want to understand what levels can be smelled, because we understand that the odor is a big problem. Um, so one of the questions we had is at what level could the uh, could MCHM or its uh, the crude MCHM be smelled? Could it be smelled at levels that are so low that they may be below the detection level of analytical instruments? And can those levels be, uh, are all those levels well below the levels that have, been, that have been determined to be screening levels? If they are, that may bring some comfort that uh, you can smell it at levels that may not be uh, a, a health effect to you. Um, we are, one of our jobs was to develop a, a sampling plan to determine how much MCHM is out there. So once we know what you can smell, we want to know how much is out there. We also want to then uh, evaluate whether there are any breakdown products that may be of concern and may, may need to be looked at in greater detail. And then we also wanted to evaluate the screening levels. We're going to report on all these things, the screening levels. Uh, that work will be done and we will report out and get on that again on Tuesday um, uh, next week. Um, um, so our schedule, we started our efforts on February 11th, approximately one month after the spill, and we plan to complete our work and be done with a final report before May 15th. Progress that we have made, um, uh, we, the, the odor threshold results, you'll, you'll have some results from that uh, from Dr. McGuire, 10 home testing, we will be uh, giving you results on, on that. that sampling is done and we have most of the data in and analyzed. Um, we also will look at the tentatively identified compounds uh, in those homes and we'll tell you what the story is there when our findings work. Um, we will give you initial plans for a larger scale sampling program that will do a statistical, statistically rigorous um, job of determining what the concentrations are in the homes in West Virginia. Um, and then we also will give you the plans for the expert panel that will be reviewed in establishing the screening levels. And again, that will occur next week. So over the next few weeks, we will be posting products uh, regularly. Um, uh, uh, the health effects expert panel preliminary results will be reported um, Tuesday, April 1st, with the final expert report um, the, the last week of April. The uh, final, we expect the final lower threshold results by the middle of April. Um, we will report today on the you know, breakdown products and tentatively identified compounds and the final design for the full scale monitoring program. I think I skipped the slide here. Um, nope. Okay. Um, I just wanted to note that we already have got quite a bit of information uh, that has been posted already. That includes the odor threshold work for the uh, expert panel. Uh, we also have posted um, the uh, literature review that will be used by the, um, by the expert panel next week. Um, within the next uh, few weeks, uh, at the, our website, most of you know that, um, you, you will see this literature review for the crude FCHM, PPH, and DIPPH that has been posted already. Um, we posted the CDC response to WVTAP questions regarding the screen levels. There's been some confusion about what CDC has said. I think that we've brought that to some closure. Uh, and again, the, the, order technical, uh, the order threshold technical memo and the expert panels have already posted. The anticipated posting in the next, uh, next month 
Uh, we, we will be integrated, we will be posting an integrated relational database that has all the data that is including the quality control data that are relevant. That's over 30, we're posting over 1,300 pages of uh, laboratory results. Those are the raw results. You can pour over them at your own leisure. Uh, that includes over 12,000 data points and it has all the raw chemical analysis. The order threshold report for the consumer panel will be done shortly. Dr. McGuire will tell you more about that. And um, the health effects expert panel final report will be done probably by the end of uh, April. Uh, the statistical design for a larger sampling program, I'll be giving you some information about that today, but we'll be giving you the details of that um, uh, in a report that will be posted on the website. And then at the end of this project, we will be integrating all of these results together into a final report. That final report, we will present some of those results here in Charleston, and that report will be available for, you, for, the, for the state then to uh, peruse and start making some decisions about how they go, where we can go going forward. Ground rules for the presentation. As when I step off the uh, podium, uh, we, we, we're going to begin a seminar series. The, uh, the experts are going to be asked to present their findings to you. We ask that you hold all questions for this afternoon. Uh, we will break for lunch and then return to the auditorium at 1.15 for questions. We will ask you all to line up to the microphones that we will have on the sides of the aisles. We will take one question at a time. In order to allow us to answer a significant number of questions, we will ask that you stick to two minutes for your questions. Be brief, think about how you want them to be worded and be exact. That will help us answer them effectively. Um, our answers, we will try not to exceed three minutes. Short questions mean that we'll be able to answer more questions and we ask you please to be polite. Uh, we are here to answer your questions and to work with you, uh, not to have arguments. Uh, so please be polite and we'll do our best to be the same and also to answer your questions as best we can. And with that, I would like to uh, call on Dr. Michael McGuire to uh, take over the podium, and Dr. McGuire is going to tell you about the odor threshold uh, research that has been done. Dr. McGuire. Uh, 
is used in the field of taste and odor. Uh, they're defined on the screen. Uh, the three things are, and somewhere there's a, a very powerful laser. Um, the first thing that we want to determine is how, how low a concentration can people detect. In other words, what is the odor threshold concentration, the OTC? And this is done usually in a laboratory setting where you're using uh, expert panelists and, and also sometimes consumer panelists where approximately you determine a number where approximately 50% of the panelists can reliably detect, uh, in this case, that odor. The second thing we want to know is not can you just detect it, not, how, not that you can just detect differences between, say, three cups, but you can also recognize the odor and describe it. And that's where we get to the recognition, the odor recognition concentration, or ORC, and that is usually, again, typically done in a laboratory setting, and then you try to relate that information to what consumers are doing in the, in the uh, distribution system. And then finally, we want to know when does a level of a chemical in water that's causing an odor reach the level of objection or complaint. In other words, you can actually recognize, you can detect something that's there, but you don't know what it is. You can then maybe detect it and then recognize that it's a, 